Hey, good morning. Uh, I just talked to a friend of mine uh, down in uh, oh Alabama. I was asking about David Terrell, God's prophet to the world, and uh, how he, you know, how he's doing, right? And uh, we used to sit under his ministry for for a number of years. Anyway, uh, David Terrell is off. I've been off the uh, scene for about. Uh, since last December, uh, the Lord has called him aside, so he's not out in the harvest fields. He's not doing holding uh, revival meetings. And they built a new uh, tabernacle close to the next one. And I remember in the visions, when I met my wife and we went down there for our honeymoon in the seven open visions, that uh, it seemed like <coughs> that... Uh, it was in the in the tabernacle, but it might have been this new one. This new one is uh, quite a bit bigger, uh, but still has the same format. I can remember that that it was packed. It was just jam packed out, and and watching the videos now prior to last December, there were just barely a handful of people sitting in the seats, more empty empty chairs and people. But as time is is coming, where God's going to fill up. The, the church is once again. So this this COVID thing is uh, David Terrell did have a he did say about this COVID thing. He said that it was just a slap on the wrist, just a slap on the wrist. So this COVID thing is a slap and on the wrist that uh, God is doing right. And he said that what's coming is going to be uh, we're going to have to prepare for it right. Because the the big shakedown is coming, and uh, a lot of you out there, uh, you know, I'm talking to you Christians out there, or talking to new believers out there. If you look at the Old Testament, and this is what I want to bring out this morning, and we're going to have to learn how to stand in the days ahead. And this is just the intro to to a teaching that I want to bring forth concerning the rest of God, right? And this whole journey that we're on, if you ask yourself, what is the, uh, the, the, the end result of being a Christian, right? Is it the rapture, being taken away? Uh, you know, the scripture says when you, you see all these things coming to look up for your, for your redemption, draw off nigh, right? So what did Jesus see on the cross? He saw a redemption of Christians, he saw a redemption of, of of a people who believed in him, not just salvation. <coughs> <coughs> He's talking about redemption coming into the fullness of redemption, right? So we're on this spiritual path. We're a believer. We're going around the mountain, and who is worthy to escape the things coming upon the world, right? You have to ask yourself this question, and. Uh, it's those who have learned to, to cease from their own struggles and, and to enter the rest of God, right? This is more than just salvation. This is the end of uh, one journey, and it's the beginning of an another journey. This is learning how to enter into his rest, this great peace that passes all understanding. And do a, do a search on the rest of God, and it, it will open up your eyes. Right, and uh, uh, being here, uh, settled in, in this little place that, that God put me on, that uh, I've been learning to enter into His rest, coming in, coming into a place of place of absolute peace, where you can worship the the Lord in spirit and truth, and it's 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 incredible. I just like to share one story, one story, and this is the time that I used to live in Bangs back in nineteen. 88, 87, 88, around that time. And uh, I just finished building uh, Sister Hazel's home there, right? Just a, a little cottage house. And and uh, uh, I think I finished the sheetrock and the, and the painting. It was, it was nice. It's, it was finished off. And I was doing work on, on another, working for another sister, helping to uh, do, doing some trailer repairs. And I came back uh, that lunchtime, and I was pouring myself a glass of iced tea. It was really hot outside. 
and this and this black vehicle pulled up in front of the house and these two guys come out one guy was mexican one guy was white they they were the federales right sent sent up they came up from abilene so they came in and they they had their guns and all that and uh they came up and says well we have to t uh, take you in you've been here too long you overstayed your you're welcome and uh, i can remember the uh, Mexican guy, he was looking around the place for guns and for weapons, and this guy was really paranoid. And But the, the arresting officer was a white guy, and they put me in cuffs and put me in the back of the car. But I tell you, I had something uh, about 24 hours, right? Something about uh, 24 hours. And I had this, when I was brought into custody, I remember... Uh, being in the jail cell, it was just a concrete floor. There's, there, there weren't no benches or nothing, so I just laid on the floor. And this is after I was uh, uh, transferred from, uh, uh, you know, from the Abilene jail to the uh, uh, federal lockup, uh, and I was the only one in there. But I had this absolute peace that passed all understanding, right? It was it was a supernatural peace, and I you know looking back I know that that God put this on me right. It was something that that He did, but I was I was in that place of supernatural rest, and I didn't even know it. It, it, was, it was an incredible feeling, and I had no worries. I had no worries. The, you know, I was taken in. I was locked up. I was looking to do uh, you know, six months uh, hard time there in a five year band. And uh, anyway, the arresting officer, after 24 hours had passed, he came up and he says, uh, I, I just don't get this. This this has never happened. And Abilene County, uh, you know, this this is in Abilene County. And all his time that he worked there, the lifetime of working there, says, this has never happened. That I've been instructed by the attorney general to let you go to give you a 30-day extension. And uh, he handed me this piece of paper and, and, uh, and to, to get back to the border, right? And uh, But right at the end, I remember he was questioning me. He was saying, how did you get into America? Tell me the truth. And uh, I thought about it. And the third time that he asked me the question, I... I <clears throat> I was honest with him, right? I got a ride across the border from a friend, then I took the bus down to Texas, and so that's one of the that's what they wanted me to know. If I would have not have answered the truth, uh, probably I would have been doing time, and you know, but I but I had this absolute peace, and the Lord came on the scene, and I was delivered, and and uh, everybody was shocked because they that I knew there because they thought that I was going away for a long time. And uh, this is not the first time that this has happened. This has happened uh, throughout my life in different circumstances. And uh, at the time, I, I didn't understand. But the times we are going into people, we're going to have to know how to enter into his rest, right? And that's where we're at now. Uh, we need to be in the ark, right? And the ark is going to carry us above the troubled waters. You know, Jesus, when he was sleeping in the boat and the waves were roaring around, the boat was being tossed, he was at rest. He was saying, this is how I want you to be. Even though um, the, the waters are troubled, learn to rest in me. Enter into my rest. And those who do, and this is what the whole journey of the Christian life is about. It's not about being taken out of tribulation. It's not about being taken home in the rapture. When you, when you understand what I'm saying right now, it will change, it will give you a greater understanding of what the Father is doing, right? There's a people that is preparing that will enter into his rest, this 42nd generation, right? And, and, uh, this is the end of our journey on on this side of the, 
you know, it, where we're coming into the kingdom, right? Or that our path, as far as walking the Christian life, is coming to an end. <clears throat> the end of the journey is to enter into His rest. For those that 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 are that do enter into into His rest, they are the ones that the Father will use to bring in the the final harvest, right? You understand what I'm saying? And this is critical. And all this COVID thing, this uh, slap on the wrist that God is doing, allowing, is to uh, give us a little push to enter into his rest, to have time at, at home, to enter into his rest, just to be quiet before the Lord, right? And enter into that great peace that passes understanding. And there's no there's no fear there. There's no nothing there, just his abiding presence. And, and uh, you know, I've been, <clears throat> you know, the last month I kind of uh, neglected my, my devotions. I'm getting back into them again. And uh, you know, this morning, the Lord op opened up my eyes and showed me about this great peace that passes all understanding. Something that I'm not just talking about that I've been experienced in it, not, not really having the full revelation of it. So I'm speaking to you people out there you know, that are going through trials and tribulations. It's time to cease from your struggles and to enter into the rest of God. That's the only thing that's going to keep us. Many people are going to go home uh, soon. This COVID thing is going to escalate uh, they're going to take people out of their homes and, and put them into lineups to force vaccination. And, and, and eventually, you're going to be in the lineups to become a martyr, right? The, the full number of martyrs have to come in. And uh, anyway, my friend Johnny, when we were on the mountain this last uh, weekend for a couple of days, uh, he just shared a vision that he had. Every time that the Lord brings Johnny and I together, we're entering into a, a deeper part of God's rest. It's just incredible. That's the only way that I can explain it. But what he saw that, he saw this lineup of Christians going in to be executed. Right? <clears throat> and people are really shaking. Um, a lot of people hungry. A lot of people distraught. And we were there ministering the rest of God. To be at peace. Let your your hearts not be troubled, for you're going on to glory. Th these people, their hearts are being prepared to go on to glory, to leave this realm. And, and those who enter into his rest, you know, dying is not a hard thing, right? To come into that place of peace where you die in the rest of the Lord. You know, some are going to die. Others are, are going to uh, uh, go forth and fulfill their their destiny, and walk in their Father's will, right? And we were ministering to them, and and uh, the the powers to be had, they, they couldn't couldn't touch us. No, the the physically they couldn't stop us from ministering to the people that were had to make a choice, right? So the Lord sent us there to 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 bring peace to them. To minister the rest of God, saying, "Don't, don't, don't worry. You, you, you're not going to feel the blade, right? You're not that. That's going to be. That Jesus is going to be waiting for you on the other side, right? So the ones who give their lives as martyrs will rule and reign for with with Christ for a thousand years. And this is incredible, but there there will be others." that will go on to perfection. Those who have entered into his rest, they will go on to perfection. That, that God's going to do a, a greater work in them, to bring them to the fullness of redemption, to come into the fullness of the Godhead, right? And then the Lord will come back at the Battle of Armageddon at some point, you know, at, at the last trump. And, and those who are alive and remain, who have entered into his rest, right? The fullness of his rest, they will be redeemed from the earth. So you really need to understand this journey that we're on. And not be afraid not to go into fear about this COVID thing because it's something that God is allowing. 
you need to understand this. And once you understand this, then it, it's, then your heart can be settled and enter into that 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 great peace that passes all understanding. And that's what the three days of darkness is about. It's about those who have entered into the ark. They have entered into the rest of God. And during these three days of of darkness that's coming upon the land soon, there's going to be a people that's going to be in a state of rest. And that's what the <clears throat> the Lord's that's where the, the 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 glory of the Lord it is it, going to come, right? There's going to be a visitation. There's going to be a transformation. And entering into His rest, you're going beyond the veil. You're going through the veil to enter into His rest and to come and and, and, and to fulfill to experience all the promises made to the overcomer, right? There's going to be a people that's going to overcome all things. A people that the powers of darkness are not going to be able to stop. Right? It's all about the harvest. And I remember Ephraim Rodriguez saying, the guy that the Lord raised up about this asteroid impact in Puerto Rico. It, he, and I'm <clears throat> listening to him last weekend. Uh, he had a video that came out in September uh, of this year. He was saying that that the harvest will begin. The harvest will begin after the three days of darkness. The harvest will begin. Right? There's going to be great turmoil. And so we have to prepare our, our, our hearts by learning to enter into the rest of God, this great peace that passes all understanding. And as we do, that we no longer live, we no longer are struggling on the cross, right? We no longer are struggling on the cross, and that, that and that and that prepares us to to, to 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 come into that place where we're going to experience the revelation of the Lord, the revelation of Jesus Christ, and and that's mandated for those who have entered into His rest. Not everyone's going to enter into His rest. But that's the end, end of the journey. And those that do are going to become the greatest spiritual warriors of all time. That's what we came here for. That's why we came to this earth. We're chosen to come to this earth. Was to fight in this last battle. Right? To fight in this last battle. But the key to be to being promoted, the key to be to to be in chosen to be a chosen vessel is to are, are those who have entered into his rest. So I'm I'm, I'm pleading with you, do a a search on the rest of God, and you will be amazed. We need not fear anything if we are in his rest. I'm going to end it here.